Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Nicolo Praises Gnome because if you've been following me you probably know that I'm actually a big fan of the Gnome project. I don't use it and yes I do develop for Kitty Plasma but nonetheless I do think that the Gnome project is pretty good. And if you're not into Kitty Plasma for whatever reason I do think it's fair to use Gnome to be clear. I, I think I've, I've said it, I've said it. So there are a couple of reasons why I think that I think this and before we get to the main thing that I'm totally envying GNOME for these days, let's get to a couple of smaller reasons that make me think that the GNOME project is actually pretty good. And the first one is that I actually think that having a clear idea of what you want your desktop to be and then acting on that idea is a good is a good approach. Like I think it works pretty well. Yes, if you're not really into the GNOME sort of workflow, then you'll you're probably out of luck and you will need to find another desktop environment. But if you are into the GNOME workflow, and I think that many people are, then it works really well to do that. In fact, myself, I'm a big fan of how GNOME deals with things, with the idea of virtual desktops and not having a minimized button, not having icons on the desktop, all those things I fully agree on. And I actually do just that, but on KD Plasma 2 because I think it's a nice approach, but I do think that the GNOME approach works best on GNOME. I replicate it on KD Plasma, but I think it works better on GNOME simply. So that's one thing. Also by choosing specifically what you want to do and sticking to that, well, that allows you to make sure that you, uh, your software is as stable as possible, which is a great thing for a KD Plasma user. So considering the amount of, of flexibility that KD Plasma has and that it's, you know, its biggest advantage, I think, that uh, also has the downside of bringing a lot of bugs because it's hard to test for all configurations and stuff, which is why for what I'm currently developing as, you know, the floating panel, as an example, for me, it's really important to say, this is what I want to do and whatever would make it harder to maintain, harder, more bugs, more fle flexibility, I have to put a limit on that because the floating panel, uh, the panel in general is already quite complex and making it even more complex will just exponentially bring a, bring in a ton of bug reports and I don't want to deal with them. There's not enough workforce to. So these are the things that I like, but there is one particular thing that I envy, which is particularly easy to see if we go into the GNOME blog post, like this week in GNOME blog post, I think you know it. So these are the latest blog posts. Let's take this one as an example. And we can see as an example that we have this nice app in the GNOME circle that is um, used to customize the stream deck, which I don't have, it's an example. And in the latest blog post, there is this nice application that is used to upscale images that is very interesting. I've actually talked about this in the past already. And in general, if you go ahead and see pretty much any blog post from the GNOME, this week in GNOME uh, blog, then you will see some update about some new application that is coming on or, you know, old applications that are getting updated and better and better. And it's impressive actually, because if you look at all of those applications, they all look very good and very consistent with each other. I'm not too into technical details about how GNOME does application theming. I think there's like JTK that offers basic widgets and then there's Libadwaita that offers more complex widgets to integrate in your app, but they're apparently doing it very right. Even the very idea of the GNOME circle is very good and something that I think should could benefit KD Plasma as well, if you don't know what a GNOME circle is. Basically, it's a way for GNOME to somehow make third-party applications more official and into the GNOME ecosystem. And there are there are lots of very good uh, third-party applications that were previously third-party, but then get, you know, integrated into the GNOME circle, but also is one I can think of. And you do get a lot of benefits, like you get the ability to promote and advertise your application through the GNOME community. You also get some, I think like um, hosting benefits, like being able to host your application on the GNOME GitLab, this kind of thing, on the GNOME Circle GitLab. 
and you can just go to the list and there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of good maintained third party applications that are actually not third party anymore. They're kind of first party because they're within the GNOME circle. You go through them, I did for some, and they all look good and consistent and are generally actively maintained, especially because if you do want to get into the GNOME circle, then you have to um, go through some verification that uh, you have like GNOME designers that tell you uh, you're doing this correctly, this could improve, and then you act on the feedback. It's a very friendly process, I think. So in general, I've always said that I personally prefer KD Plasma applications because KD Plasma core applications like Dolphin, Gwenview, Ocular, they're all, uh, they are so powerful in what they do. And I think they're great applications. So I, I'm not taking that back. But what I totally envy of GNOME is the ability to have such a large ecosystem of applications that are maintained, that look good, and that really make it feel alive. For Kitty Plasma, it's a bit more difficult. So there is a lot more work for first party applications, but from what I've been able to see, maybe I'm completely wrong, but it's not close to what GNOME is doing in the, the amount of applications that you have and how much maintained they have. They are. If you go into the Kitty Plasma website for applications, if you go through the list of all of the applications and actually try them out to see how they look, how they're maintained and such, I think you will easily find a bunch of applications like all the games applications usually that look very outdated, uh, outdated compared to the current design of KDE as a whole and that are also not quite maintained. Take on Quirr as an example. Yes, it's in this list, but I would never, I, I, I would just never suggest anybody to actually use Conqueror. I did for a while. It's, it's that. <laughs> it's unmaintained. It's very old. I... Some applications, yes, are maintained, but because of some, you know, lack of works, workforce very often they're not able to advance as rap rapidly as some other KD applications and then you can really see how different the core applications are in terms of their design and functionality compared to some that receive updates much less often like take Caligra as an example I have used Caligra for a lot of time and I think that in its design it's it has uh, had improvements in the last years but nowhere as quickly as other KD applications and nowadays if you use Caligra it does feel a bit old and you know when, on one end I would totally want to help with that but on the other hand I don't have the time <laughs> I'm trying to build the, the panel. Even from a technical point of view I think it's not super clear of how KD applications should be done like nowadays new KD applications are usually done with Kurigami which is, is a super nice library. And I think that most applications done with uh, Kurigami look absolutely amazing out of the box. And I'm a big fan of the library. At the same time, as far as I understood it, and I've actually discussed with a GNOME developer to clarify this, Kurigami is kind of the kitty um, thing that is Libadwaita for GNOME. So offering more uh, widgets, more you know, yeah, more widgets to uh, build in your applications with, uh, of course, some differences in design. But the fact is, whereas it feels like Libadwaita for GNOME is the clear path forward for Kurigami in KD Plasma, with the fact that Kurigami is really meant to be convergent, it's sometimes not clear what Kurigami really should be, especially if you're talking about the KD Plasma desktop. If you are doing an application that is like desktop only, should you use Kurigami? And a lot of the time the answer seems to be yes, but lately it didn't seem that clear choice. And as far as I know, there hasn't been quite a choice about this from the design group. So it is something to uh, discuss about, to think about, because as a whole, I think that the GNOME environment, as far as the amount of applications and how well all of those applications are done is something that I totally envy. And that I think that from the KD Plasma side is things are yet not yet that good. 
I think we can improve though. We'll get there. We'll get there.